we begin with chapter 2 that is jewish hellenistic and roman background of saint paul so three backgrounds paul had three backgrounds three influences on his life on his writings on his theology whatever you like so these three backgrounds uh, will enlighten us a lot to the further study of paul and his uh, literature okay so chapter 2 heading jewish hellenistic and roman background that is jewish background hellenistic background or greek background thirdly roman background okay we go with the first one jewish background or you can also write as jewish influence colon a pharisee because paul was a pharisee good so i would like to begin uh, this section with a quotation from philippians 3 5 i have already referred it in the morning session once again because paul is introducing himself beautifully uh, in this philippians 3 5 i read for you circumcised on the eighth day of the people of israel of the tribe of benjamin a hebrew born of hebrews as to the law a pharisee beautiful isn't it with one sentence he has introduced himself all his life so in this particular sentence we find uh, is self esteem as a pharisee paul regarded himself as self esteemed himself being a pharisee and then this also gives us presents to us his whole hearted dedication to the law torah no we can see his self esteem as a pharisee and his whole hearted devotion dedication commitment to the law because for a jew especially for a pharisee law is everything nothing is above the law law i mean torah the first five books of the old testament and later the multiplication 610 laws you know which were multiplied later so for jewish people for pharisees especially so these are life nothing more than that okay now we will see how uh, paul introduced himself beautifully first he said of the people of israel he said i am of the people of israel what does it mean of the people of israel that is a jew by birth so paul is telling that he is a jew by birth of the people of israel no israel people are jewish people you know it is similar so when paul said of the people of israel he meant that he is a jew by birth he belonged to the tribe of benjamin that we have already seen in philippians 3 5 then that claim is also repeated in romans 11 1 coming from the tribe of benjamin so at least twice he has mentioned first in philippians 3 5 the same claim he has repeated in romans 11 1 so paul is from the tribe of benjamin so two references we have then second one paul describes himself as a hebrew born of hebrews israelite people are also called as hebrews but he uses that exclusively that expressions no a hebrew born of hebrews so what does it mean so hebrew born of hebrews is more a specialized expression than israelite so it's a more specialized expression than israelite or jew then there is a difference between uh, when i say i am a jew then when i say i am a hebrew what is the difference when i say i am a jew it is more religious centered because judaism is a religion i am a jew it's a, it's a religious uh, centered when i say or when paul when i means paul hebrew then it is language centered see that difference please note down then third one as to the law a pharisee that's how paul introduced so having studied under the famous rabbi gamaliel a leading pharisee of the of his time he had an rabbinic training so he claims in his introduction he also claims that uh, as to the law uh, reference to gamaliel you find it in acts of the apostles chapter 22 3 apart from philippians 3 5 then um, two more references where he claimed that he is a pharisee in acts 26 5 that is the declaration that paul makes before king agrippa in acts 26 5 
he says i belonged to the strictest sect of our religion and lived as a pharisee then another time he also makes his claim before sanhedrin uh, that we find in acts 23 6 so the claim was that he was a pharisee a son of a pharisee in front of the sanhedrin now since paul is a pharisee and then uh, that pharisaic influence is very much uh, in his writing so i would like to give a little background to pharisees you know very often we also listen in the gospels pharisees sadducees scribes and so on so i would like to give uh, a little background of uh, what is pharisees pharisaism from where this sect came and so on okay the word pharisee actually comes from the ancient greek word pharisaios then hebrew it is purism then in aramaic perisaia perisaia what does it mean it means separated the literal meaning of uh, pharisee means separated or the separated ones or separators separated separate ones or separators to set apart uh, that's the meaning that is distinguishers and expositors of the law so they are set apart separated for the law to expose the law distinguish the law in other words they were interpreters of the law very leading sect within judaism among all the sects so now from where did they come what was their origin origin of pharisees their origin is traced back to assidians of the maccabean period according to josephus a first century jewish author the group might have appeared in the reign of john hircanus we read in the maccabean book one of the maccabean ruler within bracket you can put 135 to 104 bc so during his reign there was a group called hasidians more or less who were giving more importance to torah law traditions so the origin of pharisees might have been from this group okay so we can trace back to the origin of pharisees to hasidians during the time of maccabeans especially during the reign of john hircanus and the time is given this hasidians again they were believed to be the successors of ezra yeah when you study prophets uh, na- uh, certainly you will uh, refer to ezra that is more or less uh, after after the exile they come and then they f- the people of israel find everything shattered they lost their home their land so they were trying to rebuild the temple so it was during the time of ezra and nehemia yeah, the people of israel were trying to rebuild rebuild themselves rebuild the temple rebuild their houses um, reprocure their land and rebuild much more than their own lives so it is that time hezra gives more importance to the law every day the law was read probably that was the starting point where the law began to be given more important exclusively importance so these hasidians are said to be the heirs and then the pharisees said to be coming from these hasidians coming to the time of jesus what was the attitude of pharisees so they were very hostile uh, to jesus uh, they found that jesus was uh, always breaking up the rules and regulations of jewish law, religious practices so they found that um, jesus was upsetting them that is why during the time of jesus pharisees were very hostile very hostile to jesus enemical to jesus they were very hostile extremely hostile to jesus because they found upsetting all their religious practices then uh, john the baptist he called them brood of vipers because of their pride and self righteousness in the gospel of matthew and luke we find that then uh, jesus also warned them against their hypocrisy now very often he addressed them you hypocrites he warned them against their hypocrisy rigidity um, their pretentious attitude and uh, also their fanatic spirit and uh, jesus also used uh, expressions like whitewashed tombs 
and he and the famous woes woe to you scribes woe to you pharisees to condemn them so jesus was uh, condemning them okay uh, but what was the main uh, aspect of their life pharisees this one sentence from karl rana pharisaism strove constantly and vigorously to do justice to the law by bringing it into relevant relation with contemporary needs so their main focus was always on the law to do justice to the law that's what they were doing from context to context then what is the pharisees relationship to sadducees and essenes there are three important sects in judaism that is essenes sadducees and pharisees so what is the pharisees relation what is the difference between them essenes were separated from the ordinary life of the people so essenes were not living in the society so they were separated group essenes were separated from the ordinary life of the people by so they had their own customs and religious practices then on the contrary pharisees lived among the people and were intensely involved in the daily lives of the people so very contradiction between essenes and pharisees and pharisees were like a lay group opposed to to sadducees priestly group but pharisees were lay people lay group so they were opposed to priestly group just listen i read the priests and the scribes priests and scribes were the predominant elements of judaism after the exile okay after that exile priests and the scribes were the predominant dominant elements of judaism after the exile at the time of ezra in the time of hellenistic era they developed an opposition to each other these are scribes and sadducees because they were the dominant elements after the exile they developed a kind of opposition to each other later in the maccabean times they constituted two separate and distinct parties sadducees from among the priests and pharisees from the scribes so because of this opposition so priests emerged from sadducees uh, pharisees emerged from scribes what was the difference between them faith wise sadducees admitted only the law law means here torah the first five books of the old testament on the contrary pharisees apart from this law they also accepted the oral traditions sadducees never accept the oral traditions for them law is everything that's it but pharisees they accepted this law together with oral traditions so that is the difference between sadducees and pharisees i quote j gresham macken read morality thus became a matter of external rules and religion became a matter of external rules and religion became a credit and debit relationship into which a person entered with god then uh, another difference between sadducees and uh, pharisees unlike uh, sadducees the pharisees believed in the existence of uh, angels spirits they also believed in the resurrection of the dead and the last judgment sadducees no they don't believe in angels they don't believe in uh, spirits resurrection of the dead no also sadducees no last judgment so that is the all, another basic importance now i would like to give some important characteristics of the pharisees first of all they were noted for their scrupulous practice of the law scrupulous means like blindly because for them law is everything blindly they follow the law so they were noted for their scrupulous practice of the law and its regulations and they regarded judaism as a religion centered upon the observance of the law that is why they were always trying to find fault with jesus and apostles the torah was regarded as a fence protecting them especially from the greek world because greek culture greek philosophy was a dominant uh, time so even jewish religion judaism also got influenced into that so they 
మేడ్ దిస్ తోరా లైక్ ఎ ఫెన్స్ టు ప్రొటెక్ట్ దెమ్ సెల్స్ ఫ్రమ్ అదర్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్సెస్ సో తోరా వాజ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఐ కోట్ వన్ స్కాలర్ ద తోరా మెంట్ టు ద జ్యూస్ ద సమ్ మెన్ సబ్స్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ దట్ ఈస్ గుడ్ అండ్ బ్యూటిఫుల్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ దట్ ఈస్ వర్త్ నోయింగ్ దట్ మీన్స్ తోరా లా ఈజ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ from them that is from introduction to the talmud and midrash that is a book by h l strack now what mattered most to them was perfect observance of rules even at the cost of love so what mattered most to the pharisees was perfect observance of rules even at the cost of love that is why jesus gave so many parables good samaritan Uh, so good story last sheep last coin and uh, so all these uh, parables you know to teach a lessons go beyond the law so that is why later paul proclaimed the supremacy of christ over the law so christ was the law so that paul was proclaiming the supremacy of christ over the law i put one question here why paul was against christian so now we have studied what was pharisees their characteristics their attitude their mentality so keeping in mind that background so we can very well answer this question why was paul persecuting christians naturally it, it was because of his religion because of his importance to law he was very zealous for uh, judaism to him being separated from judaism meant being alienated from the law being alienated means separated separated from the law from synagogue and from good works so for a pharisee or for a jew getting out of judaism means it is getting out of out from the law which is a life which is some and substance of their life so they cannot imagine that such a separation such such alienation was a big sin for jewish people that is being against judaism and that was exactly what the followers of christ were doing so naturally jewish people wanted to put an end to this new way started by the believers of christ so that's one these are some of the basic reasons why paul was persecuting christians in galatians 1:14 we read Paul says I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people so extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers I mean later he is writing why he was like that why he was he persecuting christians he writes because I was so zealous ardent so as long as Paul was an orthodox a strict follower of Judaism so it was natural for him to persecute christians and the second point salvation for a jew was unthinkable outside of judaism because christians were claiming that salvation is through christ christ is the lord so for jewish people it is unthinkable so this movement so it brought it was a conflict with the orthodox jewish view of the law because this new movement challenged the traditions the temple worship and their exclusive claim of salvation this new movement christianity uh, it challenged their traditions the temple worship and their exclusive claim to salvation so pharisee like uh, paul single hearted devotion to the law an orthodox jew so naturally would go for this persecution so we have enough and more reasons why was he persecuting christians so naturally all the jews especially paul was intolerant of any other religion no except judaism because is a devotion to torah observance of the law all that what i said then i give one reference where we find paul's devotion to torah so his devotion to torah is clearly seen in philippians 36 philippians 36 paul paul writes i was above reproach when it came to justice based on the law philippians 36 then another question i would like to pose 
did paul meet the historical jesus did paul see jesus the physical jesus but there were also scholars very few scholars who argued also that paul could have met because the age difference between jesus and paul is 10 to 15 years naturally they were contemporaries and paul was educated all the time in jerusalem most of his life was in jerusalem for rabbinic training jesus was in jerusalem was there a possibility might have seen not might have seen these few scholars who argued that paul might have seen they based their argument from second corinthians 5:16 i will read and then second corinthians 5:16 so paul writes like this we regard no one from a human point of view even though we once knew christ from a human point of view that particular expression caught the attention of these scholars even though we once knew christ from a human point of view we know him no longer in that way once we knew christ from a human point of view so this caught the attention of few scholars so basing on this so few uh, scholars claim that uh, yeah he was in jerusalem and jesus was in jerusalem might have seen anyhow not supported by majority of the scholars but still open because uh, this particular reference second corinthians 5:16 is open so very few agree that paul met the earthly jesus most of the exegetes deny that they do not agree with their argument if at all if paul had met jesus he would have seen him naturally as an enemy isn't it you would not have made friendship with uh, jesus the following reasons i would like to give four reasons why paul would have developed enmity with jesus first one judaism accepts yahweh as the lord only yahweh as the lord there is no other lord no yahweh alone as their lord whereas the followers of jesus were proclaiming the crucified jesus as their lord so monotheistic jews would not accept this so that is the first reason why paul could be an enemy to jesus to christianity second reason judaism expected a messiah of a political nature jewish people were expecting a messiah naturally but what type of messiah a political messiah a messiah would come and rule out the roman empire like the old kings he would fight with the sword a political messiah of that nature but jesus death who was said to be messiah on the cross was considered as a a fatal defeat so for jewish people jesus could not be considered as a political messiah so that is the second reason third one judaism says in deuteronomy 21 23 anyone hung on a tree is under god's curse so jesus was a curse he was hanged upon a tree on the cross so cannot be a messiah cannot be a liberator deuteronomy 21 23 and uh, a uh, reference also made by paul galatians 3:13 but on the contrary no christ redeemed us from the curse of the law so he by becoming a curse he himself became a curse on the cross and he saved us redeemed us from the curse of the law for we read first corinthians 1:23 we proclaim christ crucified a stumbling block to jews and foolishness to gentiles so christ crucified was a stumbling block to the jews they could not accept jesus crucified because for them is a failure comparing to their expectations but for christians he is the victor he won freedom he won over the law on the on the cross by becoming a curse according to deuteronomy 21 23 that is why paul writes we proclaim christ crucified who is a stumbling block to the jews who is a foolishness to gentiles fourth reason jews especially pharisees observed strictly circumcision sabbath law 
and dietary customs and traditions first one circumcision sabbath law dietary customs and traditions so these are strictly observed strictly followed by all the jews all the more especially pharisees they thought that salvation can be attained by observing all these perfectly for them observation observance of this law is salvation so they believed to attain salvation through these observances on the contrary christians were not following such tr- traditions no even uh, stephen was blamed for that before the council acts of the apostles chapter 6 verses 13 to 14 they set up a false witnesses they said this man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law for we have heard him say that this is jesus of nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that moses handed on to us and likewise not only stephen we read in uh, galatians philippians acts chapter 9 we read like like stephen many other christian believers were persecuted and killed so that is more or less the jewish background of paul now we move to the greek background of paul is basically education okay jewish background focused on as a pharisee uh, hellenistic background or greek background is education so because uh, uh, hellenism was known for knowledge education philosophy university etc so as we have already seen uh, in the morning sessions paul was born at tarsus which was a capital city of the province of cilicia and uh, tarsus was um, an important city in the hellenistic world which was a center of culture learning philosophy education etc and uh, during the new testament times tarsus was more known for university education than athens and alexandria we have already said that and moreover in acts of the apostles chapter 21 verse 39 paul says i am a citizen of no mean city then from his letters we also know that paul was well versed in greco roman uh, rhetoric and philosophy because he was educated in the context of greek culture greek society greek education so naturally there was lot of influence on him that very well uh, very clearly we find in his letters that greek influence greek rhetoric Uh, greek uh, writing styles literary forms and philosophy paul uses philosophical expressions greek culture greek philosophers even uh, paul refers to some of the sayings of the greek uh, philosophers in his writings i give one or two examples he often used greek ideas sometimes he referred to greek poets sometimes to greek philosophers in his writings so we can say he was a well educated uh, citizen you no know, open to hellenistic culture even though he was a staunch jew but he was open to hellenistic culture and uh, the world i quote one scholar l cher fox i read there is a direct and conscious influence upon paul by the terminology of a popular stoicism stoic philosophy is a greek philosophy paul borrows from it certain words some points of style and even a few themes he learned a number of elements of greek culture concepts and ideas now i give examples ideas like freedom reason nature conscience virtue duty see all these are expressions coming from actually greek philosophy so paul has taken that then use of images and terms like commonwealth is coming from greek background commonwealth philippians 320 then fellow citizens paul uses that expression fellow citizens ephesians 219 then um, account philemon 18 then uh, another last one slave free free slave or slave free first corinthians 722 so paul had thus um, no, a great great influence on himself on his personality especially in his writings now let me explain one or two differences between hebrews and hellenists generally hebrews attended synagogues 
where the service was conducted in Hebrew and used Aramaic as their normal language of speech. Whereas, Hellenists spoke Greek and attended synagogues where the scriptures in Greek, that is Septuagint, were read and the prayers recited in Greek. So many of the Hellenists in Jerusalem would have roots in the lands of the dispersion like Cyrenians, Alexandrians and people from Cilicia and Asia who attended the synagogues. We can refer to in Acts 6-9. Then in the Greco-Roman world, the Hellenists would be the majority of resident Jews. And a Jew born in a Greek-speaking city like Tarsus would naturally be expected to be a Hellenist. Now, let us reflect the third influence that Paul had, namely Roman influence as a Roman citizen. We see in his letters as well as in the Acts with the Apostles especially, Paul is proud of his Roman citizenship. And Paul acquired this Roman citizenship by birth as we see in the Acts with the Apostles chapter 22, 27 following, chapter 16, 37 following and 25, 8 following. Therefore, since he had a Roman citizenship, he was exempted from tax levies. And we know Jesus and the apostles did not have this privilege and they paid a tax to the Romans. Now to get Roman citizenship, there are three ways. One can gain Roman citizenship by birth, like Paul. And secondly, one can buy the Roman citizenship. For example, we see in Acts 22.8, the tribune answered, I bought this citizenship for a large sum, to which Paul replied, but I was born a citizen. And as a Pharisee, Paul would not have bought it, not as soldier to get it as well. And the third way to acquire Roman citizenship was based on merit. Probably Paul's father or grandfather had rendered some outstanding services to the Roman cause in the Roman administration and so um, they might have uh, got the Roman citizenship. Roman citizen had three rights, namely rightful place, individual inquiry and no common punishment such as being beaten, flogged and crucified. So it implied that it is a breach of the law for a Roman citizen to be bound. It is a crime for him to be beaten, says Cicero in his writings. And we read in Acts 16.37, Beaten us in public, condemned men who are Roman citizens and have thrown us into prison. Acts 22.29, who were about to examine him, drew back from him. And the tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. And in Acts 25, 9-12, Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, asked Paul, Do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and be tried there before me on these charges? For which Paul replied, I am appealing to the emperor's tribunal. This is where I should be tried. I have done no wrong to the Jews, as you very well know. Now, if I am in the wrong and have committed something for which I deserve to die, I am not trying to escape death. But if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can turn me over to them. I appeal to the emperor. That's how Paul replies. So, wherever Paul was, the power and majesty of Rome were behind him and its authority Paul respected very much. References Romans 13, 1 to 5 and 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. So, with this, we conclude Roman influence on Paul. Thus, we conclude the topic on Jewish, Hellenistic and Roman influence on Paul. Thank you.